One of the stereotypes of golf is that it is a country club sport. But is it necessary to join a country club to learn the game or get better at it? Golf is not that hard. Well, it doesn't have to be. That's why we cut through all the highbrow golf BS to give you what you really need to know to enjoy the golfing experience. I'm Doug Smith. And I'm Cheyenne Woods. And together we have over 50 years experience playing the game of golf at every level. Every week we'll break down a new topic in 10 minutes or less, answering some of the most popular questions in golf today. You're welcome. Now, this is a polarizing topic, Cheyenne. You know, I grew up sneaking on the country club or playing country clubs when I was invited. You, on the other hand, grew up a country club member. Do you attribute some of your talent and even going to college to the fact that you had a place to play consistently? Or how do you feel about that? I don't think so at all, honestly. And I think that's why this is such a good topic today, because most people do assume that you have to be a member at a country club to improve your game. And I did grow up at a country club local here in Phoenix, and it's great to have the access to a range and to a golf course. But at the same time, I also grew up playing public golf courses at public driving ranges and hitting balls till the day ended. And I think that just goes to show that whether it's a country club or a public golf course, there's so much accessibility now for you to be able to go and have that uh, ability to go play golf whenever you want. You know, one of the downsides that I find to, to country clubs is they close at like, dust, not even dust, they close around like six roughly. So you, you can't get any more golf balls. You can't practice. The lights are gone. There's no lights at some of these clubs. I found in my own personal experience that being able to go to a night range or hit and chip under the lights made me a better golfer. It was when I had the time to play. Night golf opens up so many possibilities of people having more access to the game. And again, it's more so at public golf courses, which in my eyes is a great way to keep things cheap, keep things accessible and low key because the one thing that I noticed in being at country clubs whether growing up or even today is that sometimes they're a bit stuffy there's a lot of rules there's dress codes I love going to a range where I can wear my workout clothes or jeans and just chill out and enjoy hitting some balls now let's break down some of these myths of public golf versus country club golf because there there is a difference undeniably there's a difference between the aesthetics the shape of some country clubs versus some public golf courses Tory Pines is a public golf course, and it's pristine. Beth Page Black. Beth Page Black public is golf a course. public golf course. So I think that we need to break down the stereotype, like you said, of what a country club versus public course is. Public courses can be in amazing shape, and you can have great practice. You can have a great round of golf. Um, and I've played at some country clubs that are not up to par. So with that being said, Doug, do you, do you really think that having a membership at a country club is even necessary to improve your game? That's a really tough question. It is. And I'm going to I'm gonna answer it two ways. One is I'm going to say no initially because at the end of the day, swinging a golf club, as long as you have you know a range and the grass and the space to swing and play and practice and prepare, you can get better at the game. But I will say, when you do have access to a certain place that is aesthetically pleasing, where the grasses are perfect, the bunkers are well raked, you do get that sense of, I'm getting better by osmosis. Just being in this space, I get better. When I turned pro, the first thing I did was join a club. And looking back on it, I feel that it made me better because of the hurdles that I didn't have to jump anymore with being a public player. I didn't have to worry about going in to check in and getting a tee time days and days in advance. I hate making a tee time seven days in advance because I don't know when I'm going to be able to play. I don't know what time on the dot I'm going to be free to get to the golf course. It was really beneficial as a country club member to just be able to mosey out there, hit some balls, get to the short game area, putt, and then go play however many holes I felt like playing in the day. And I think that's one of the things that we have to take into consideration when, when we're considering this, this topic. At a public golf course, you cannot play, well, let me phrase it, you can play all the golf you want to, but you will have to pay above whatever the first cost of the round was. Now, at a club, hell, you can play all day if you want to. For me, it was that differentiator why I went the country club route as it relates to getting better. 100%. And that was a good point you made with the accessibility or just the convenience of it being a country club yeah. and you have the ability to go based on your schedule. How many holes do I want to play? I don't have to worry about, I paid for 18 holes. I have to play 18 holes. You can go and play six. You can go and play nine. Uh, so I really love that idea. And I think a good point that we need to make as well is 
what do people want out of their golfing experience? That's something they need to think about in going to a public versus a country club because not everyone wants to go and grind and practice and needs pristine conditions. Some people want to just go play 18 holes and have fun. Some people just want the social atmosphere of a country club. So there's many things that go into deciding public versus country club. What experience do I want? What money do I want to pay? And who do I want to be around? And you've got to weigh in what experience, like you said, you want to have. Now, if you're an aspiring touring professional or a really great amateur player and you're getting ready for tournaments upon tournaments, it's going to be a bit easier for you to be prepared playing a country club. But if you're a nine to five worker and you love the game and you want to be outside, then a public golf course is going to fit your budget and it's going to fit your schedule. I think a great thing about country clubs, too, is the family aspect, because country clubs a lot of times aren't just golf. You have the tennis, you have the gym, you have the pool, you have restaurants. So people who go to country clubs also maybe have that family atmosphere that they're looking for. But when as an amateur looking again at to improve your game, what's important to you? Everyone is so different. But I really don't want to deter people because at the end of the day, at a public facility, as we've mentioned in other episodes, you can chip and putt for free. You don't need to be a member of a country club to have a great short game or to be a great ball striker. Public courses offer range memberships. Those aren't available at some country clubs, right? Or, or some public courses. See if your course has a range membership that fits your budget and your flexibility. Because if you can get to the range at five o'clock in the evening and hit balls for an hour and you want to do that three or four times a week, having that membership to that spot might be beneficial. And that's a great example for one of our listeners who asked us. His name is DT Sinclair, 27. We read your question. He wants to know how we would convince somebody that golf is not a rich man's sport and that you have to have money to play. And again, with the public courses, you can go and get quality practice without having to be a member at a at an expensive, exclusive country club. Golf being a rich man's sport, one, it already is. You got to have some level of some money to play the game at the end of the day. It's just what it is. But don't be deterred because there are some I won't call them loopholes, but there's some workarounds. You know, creating a practice schedule if you don't have a, a country club membership is something that you could do. Every Saturday or Sunday, I go to the public course, I chip and I putt for an hour, and then I spend $8 and I go hit balls. Yes, I grew up, yes, at the country club as well, but there's a local course down the street where my mom and I would just putt until the sun went down. Putt, putt, putt for free. And I could putt all night long if I wanted to. And you have that access wherever you are, whatever Absolutely. city you're in, there's a course where you can go and take advantage of that free facility. You know, we can sit here and be snobs about course conditions and things like that. But if you love the game, it doesn't matter if the greens are bumpy or punch. You got to get out there and play the game. to get technical we have a question specifically from one of our listeners thankful underscore vet he wants to know the difference between getting fit by a club pro chain store employee and a high-end establishment as a player now playing professionally i've been fit from a specifically fitting company where all they do is they're brand agnostic they fit you for what's best for your game and it's a huge benefit it made a huge difference in my game I know it's specific for me they're not just trying to sell me clubs and that's one thing you want to look out for you want to be around somebody that knows what they're doing that you trust their knowledge and you know that they're in it to make you better in my own experience as a fitter my number one priority is to make someone better with the other fitting options, they don't have necessarily the full capabilities of fitting in a tour-like environment. With your experience, do you find, because I've really only seen it from one side, but do you find that going to a high-end facility has more options and more variety? There's so much product from head design, shaft, bin profiles, and, and how the clubs work in space that it's going to be tough for a person that doesn't specialize in that space to accurately articulate how this club is going to work for your game per how you load the club, per your swing speed, your height. You want to go to somebody who has the capabilities and the knowledge. And part of being fit is testing the things that don't work that you thought might so that you can rule it out and never think about it again. Everywhere you can go to be fit doesn't have those capabilities. Is the location you're going to be fit at all dependent on your skill level? I would say you need to be able to get the ball airborne to go to some of the more higher end fitting establishments. If you can't get the ball airborne, every club is pretty much going to do the same thing. It's going to roll. You're going to roll the ball. So once you're able to consistently get the ball in the air and hitting it 
consistently a direction. Now, if that direction is left or right, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get the ball airborne in a direction, you then can be fit. Now, if you do want to come see me for a fitting, feel free to hit me up at Douglas Fresh 8 on my Instagram, and we can work on getting you in immediately. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit us up at Birdies Not BS, Twitter, Instagram. And on the website, birdiesnotbs.com or in my DMs for a fitting. We'll holler at y'all. Thanks, guys.